Hey, I've been the manager here for way too long, and it's about time I let someone else take the helm. Your job is to get the crowd all hyped up so that we get the tokens flowing and the high scores are popping. And if you can prove yourself as floor manager, it might be you who takes over the legendary Dragon Arcade. Welcome to the arcade. The goal is to build up your crowd to the number on the machine so that you can retire the machines and any tokens on them. Tokens and machine cards are used to complete the manager objectives and win the game. This is the main play area. It's divided in two by the machine lineup. Players draw cards from the character deck or a small market called the entrance lineup and a discard pile will form next to it. Cards are played into crowd columns beneath the machines. There's a bank of 30 tokens and during setup a random manager card is drawn. It shows the objective to win the current game. A random power card is also drawn that can change during play. Each player starts with three cards and one token in their supply. On your turn, you can play two cards from your hand. A card can be played two ways, either for its number as a gamer or for its ability. Gamers are played into your play area. When a gamer is played, a token from the bank is automatically put on the machine. New gamers are played on top of old ones. They can't be inserted. You're trying to match colors to form a bond and build an energy chain that adds up to the number on the machine. A chain starts with the gamer at the machine. We've got to match the machine and it works down through the crowd. So if it doesn't match, the chain is broken and that card and anything below it won't add to the score in that column. A gamer might have more than one color on it. As long as one color matches the previous card, all the colors are counted. Multicolored cards can also allow you to switch colors without breaking a chain. Some gamers have this symbol instead of a number. This means its value is equal to however many tokens are on that machine. The second way to play a card is for its ability there at the bottom. Abilities can only affect your own play area. If you use a card for its ability, it's discarded and it doesn't enter your play area as a gamer. There's four main abilities. Move, Bounce, Remove, and the Special Dragon Ability. To do a move, you take any number of cards starting from the bottom of a column and move them to the bottom of any other column without reordering them on the way. To do a bounce, move one card up or down to any new position in the same column. Or you can bounce the last card in the column back into your hand. The remove ability lets you remove any number of cards starting from the bottom of a column. Then the dragon lets you use whatever ability is revealed on top of the special ability deck. Every time you use the special dragon ability, the old one is shuffled back in and a new one is revealed. Once you play two cards from your hand, your turn is done. But you can play more at a cost of one token per extra card. When you're done, you can discard any unwanted cards and refill your hand to three cards from the main deck. But be sure to check out the entrance lineup. When you refill your hand, you can take one of them instead of from the deck. Uh, hang on a second. Well, what is it? I'm trying to explain. What? Thugs? Oh, not again. Thugs are the one card that can also be played into your opponent's area. If you have a thug in your play area, you can move them, but they can't be bounced. And these bumps don't add any tokens into the machines. At the start of every turn, these brutes remove the card beneath them, turn by turn, knocking off your precious gamers. Once they reach a machine, they break it. Remove the machine, the thug, and any tokens that were on the machine. Ugh, thugs can really mess up your plans. Although, sometimes removing a machine can actually be helpful. But goodbye tokens. Oh, so sad. Once a crowd column reaches the number on the machine, the gamer nails a high score. You can retire the machine and collect its tokens into your supply and draw a new machine in its place. 
The gamers who were playing the machine at the top of each crowd column are also removed, and the rest of the crowd moves up. You do not have to retire a machine if you're able, and you can do it at any time during your turn, but you can only retire one machine per turn. Remember, you win the game by being the first person to complete the objectives on my manager card. Oh, and keep your eyes peeled for this. If this machine comes out, oh mama, it's sudden death time. Whoever gets this baby is instantly the winner. I've never seen it myself. It's truly the stuff of legend. Okay, let's review. A turn has three basic steps. First, you advance any thugs that might be in play. Second, you can play two cards as either gamers or for their abilities and any number of extra cards at a cost of one token per card. And lastly, you can discard any cards you don't want and refill your hand to three, taking one card from the entrance lineup if you choose. So, that's it. Now you know the basics. Play gamers and use their abilities to get your crowd's energy pumping. Collect machines and tokens to complete the manager card objectives and you're the winner. I'll let you take it from here. I'm going to take a nap in my office.